it's Julia. Right before Christmas, I purchased a new Tim Holtz Sizzix Bigs die. These are the dies that cut fabric, and this is their, the Sand and Sea. I really love this. It has a seahorse on it, and I've been itching to to do a, a design in my for my Etsy store with this using this die. And so I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna design one today and show you what I've come up with. I'm going to be making a pillow, but I also am putting this on a wall hanging and a tote bag. Um, and you'll have to see pictures at the end. But what I first of all did was I just took a, a piece of paper and ran it through my, my Sizzix Big Shot to cut out this, the two sizes. And then I scanned this into my computer and then took it into a into PicMonkey or you could use any photo editing software you have you, that you use to get the design that I wanted um, and I just basically it says spend time at the beach this is not a Minnesota beach I'll have to just add that but I really I really like the sea creatures once it's into a photo editing or into PicMonkey or whatever you're using you can play around with the fonts and also the size of the, of the fonts to get them the way you want with, the, with the, the designs that you're using. I am using a white denim for my little accent pillow. The size on this it will be the finished size will be 12 by 12 and so I cut a piece of denim 13 by 13 and also a piece of batting. This is just warm and natural batting that'll go underneath the front of the pillow. The back side of the pillow will be another piece of white denim. I have three pieces to this die. I don't know if my camera's picking it up or not. The sand dollar is a two-piece um, cut. The base and then this little star that goes on top of it. And then the seahorse. I picked some fabrics that from my just from my scraps that I wanted to, to cut my appliques and put heat and bond light on the back. The heat and bond light is the one in the purple package and it also has heat and bond light stamped every 12 inches or so on the roll. This is the one that allows you to sew through it without gumming up your needle. A little bit about the Sizzix Big Shot. I have had this model for at least, I would say 10 years. It is an, an investment if you are interested or looking into one of these, but they last, like I said, the mine's lasted for 10 years now. I use this almost every day, but the type of sewing I do, I do use a lot of applique work um, and that type of thing in my Etsy store. And even when I go to craft shows, I do a lot of applique work. So this has really saved my hands from having to cut so many things out. It's once you start collecting the, the bigs dies, you do find that you can just do a lot with them. Mix and match, use them in different ways. One of my most popular die is the circle die. I use, use it for my yo-yo flowers and just for many, many things. I get a couple other questions about whether you can use the dies for paper also and you know or will it dull it. I have only had one die that dulled for, on me and I did not use it at all for paper and it was a really old stamping up die and I don't know what happened if, if it was just a faulty die to begin with but that was the, the only one that's ever dulled on me and I do cut them with both fabric and paper. I, you maybe aren't supposed to, but I don't usually follow the rules on things. So I, I cut paper and I cut fabric, I cut cardboard. It, it just, it's a wonderful little machine. I also love that, love it that it's just manual. You don't have to plug it in. You just crank the handle and it will cut four layers of, of fabric at the same time which also helps for me. Now when I do this, you want to you want to see which direction you're going to want the things to lay. 
sometimes I'll, I'll lay the fabric so that the heat and bond is down and sometimes I'll lay it the other way just depending on like I said how I want the seahorse to um, lay or which which direction I want him and on my design it doesn't matter and so I'm just gonna lay it so that it's it's face down then I lay and just cover the dies with my different fabrics put it between the two plates and again your plates are gonna look like this and eventually they will crack and you have to replace these but I have maybe every six months I've replaced them they're really they last a long time and then it's as easy as just running it through I have also had people ask me or, or look at these and, and mention that the new ones don't look like this and I, I'm sure they've changed colors and then these just pop out so so easily sand dollar has these little things that pop out um, and then the little star thing will go right in this go right on top like this and then of course the little seahorse I have my design underneath my top layer and I, I don't know if you can see through it but I can see everything just just fine through this the heat and bond peels off the back and then you can I can also see where I have the little seahorse on here and I can just lay this on and this little piece goes right here when I once I have this laid the way I want I can take my iron and just cover this or just just get the glue to stick basically and just lightly press this for right now and it's on to tracing my words now these words are going to be be put on with free motion and also the applique I'm just going to free motion these on and just outline it and put some little decorative stitches on the inside I am using today um, this mark be gone pen this is a water soluble pen and it, it will mark in a in a bright blue and then when it's when you're done stitching it just disappears with water please remember to test what you're using on what kind of fabric you're using I have had these mark and it did not come out it just left a funny mark so just keep that in mind even if it even the instructions on the packaging is, is going to tell you to test when I'm putting a design on a pillow I'm a little mindful of where I'm placing it I, I want the design a little bit closer to the top than the bottom because a pillow will sit on a couch or a little love seat or wherever a bench and you and you lose some of that design at the bottom now everything is on the way I like it and, and I'm heading going to head over to my sewing machine I am going to be using my free motion sh foot and you will see you will see that I'm be using a navy blue thread on this and because I'm free motioning this on I will have my feed dogs dropped so I will be doing the motion and I'll set my camera up so you can see see me work and see me do my letters it's one of my goals this year to practice practice on writing so this is just a good exercise for that when I go to my sewing machine now I will be taking this top layer with me and also this this um, the warm and natural which is full of strings imagine that so this will be sewn like this I found that I don't need to hoop when I have a piece of batting underneath it's just perfect for moving and and I can get um, it, it, it's, it's stable enough so I'm gonna set up at the sewing machine and we'll be back I'm gonna do a little jig first and then to, to lock my, my stitch in and then I'm gonna be cutting my thread and then we'll continue
you are going to see me go over things twice, sometimes even three times. It will have a sketchy look. Sometimes I'm not exactly right on my stitch line. Um, with practice, you get a little bit better. And with these letters, I'm going quite slow. I'm speeding this video up, otherwise it's going to be way too long. But I am going quite slow with my letters. But I have found with practice, even that can increase too. a little bit of doodling in this seahorse's head. I'm almost finished with my piece. I have a sand dollar left and I'm switching to a cream colored thread um, to do the work on this. I'm trimming off my excess batting. You can see that I still have a lot of my blue Mark Be Gone showing. I'm taking just a damp, um, clean rag and just going over that to remove, to remove those marks. You do have to get it quite wet in order for them to completely disappear. My front side, my front of my pillow to the back of my pillow. I used a, a half inch seam allowance going all the way around and left open six inches at the bottom to, to turn it. I clipped my corners just to get rid of some of the bulk and now it's just a matter of getting in and turning it and poking out the corners and pressing it. I'm going to leave a link up on the i card of uh, how I finish my pillows. I use uh, my pressure foot underneath and I do close my pillows um, with my sewing machine using the pressure foot. So you can take a check on that. I wanted to go over a little bit on my fiber fill that I use. This is my favorite fiber fill for pillows and it is by Morning Glory. It's called Cluster Stuff and I pick, I get it at Walmart. Now my little Walmart store used to carry carry this in stock and they don't anymore or in the store. I do have to order it online and then they, it's, it's sent to my store. So check out that little video and, and again it'll show you how I close my pillows. And that is it for my projects today. I, I will show you some pictures of the finished pillow, the finished wall hanging with the same design and also my tote. And I hope this has given you some ideas on how to use different dyes. But, uh, just another hint on a, on the dyes. I this one I, I picked up at their right before right after Thanksgiving sale. And if you subscribe to the Sizzix.com newsletter, you will get notice notifications of some of their sales. And they run really good sales on their on their Bigs dyes. So just a recommendation if you want to do some collecting and you want to start cutting fabric with the big shot. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.